Hi, and welcome back. Um, a few of my patrons over on Patreon have requested um, a demonstration to show me painting um, a marshland. So I thought I'd do it slightly differently. I thought I'd try and paint a misty, frosty, desolate winter marshland scene, but in a sort of semi-abstract and spontaneous way. Um, and just see what happens. So it may change part way through because that's the thing with these um, spontaneous experimental paintings um, or warm ups, really. Um, it could go any way. So I'm just going to use Payne's Grey. Now, Cotman Payne's Grey is beautiful. You can get really nice dark black, almost black colours, as you can see here. But when you use a lot of water, it splits out into black, grey and, funnily enough, blue, a really good blue. So I'm hoping that we'll get some of that sort of subtle splitting here um, because I'm going to use lots of water. Um, my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees, so gravity will help me paint. I'm using um, bamboo harky brushes or flat brushes from um, AliExpress and I'm using Saunders Waterford cold press paper. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape. Now I used really thick tube consistency paint across the middle, um, having wet the page all over the sky and some of the foreground. Um, I then used a little bit of paint and pulled out a graduated wash um, for the sky. Um, I'm going to use the water spray as well to see what happens and see what effects I can get. So I'm really going to be playing around and experimenting with the wet in wet technique here and tipping and tilting the board. So I've got those runs coming down. So rather than panicking, I'm going to create some more runs and spray. And there you can see now that run looks a bit more intentional and I can tilt the board and spread those runs out a bit more so that they start to form um, a really interesting mid and foreground. Using a clean damp brush or the same brush that I was using, just making sure that it's not too watery, I can feather through that paint and just help to spread it out and blend it a bit. So if you're going to be painting along and trying something like this, remember no two will be the same. They'll all be different and that's the beauty and the joy of this sort of method of painting. Um, but if you're open-minded um, and you don't mind playing around like this, then you can usually make something out of it. Now I'm going around wiping any water and paint from my tape because I'm going to lay it flat in a minute. Um, and I don't want any of the pools of water that have formed on the board to go back into the painting and cause runbacks. So as I'm watching my board, I'm seeing where they, there is a lot of paint pooling and rather than um, laying it flat straight away, I've tilted it round. You can see how that darker paint has now run across horizontally and actually given me some nice shadowy effects there. So now it's time to lay the board flat and just before I dry it, I'm going to just sort of straighten up a few bits by running a, running a brush horizontally um, just through the sort of horizon line there. Maybe softening back a little bit here and there. And then maybe trying to pull across some reeds because this is my marshland. So I'm going to have some, the idea is to have some reeds across the front. So I'm going to start off the texture for that. And remember, it's just the Cotman Payne's grey. And you can already see so many beautiful, subtle greys and blues starting to split out from this. Um, and now... I think by sort of feathering up my brush, I've created this kind of underpainting for the reeds that I want um, in the foreground. So now this is salt. I'm sprinkling finely ground, ordinary common or garden table salt. Um, you can see it's just there. It's, it's just really finely ground. Um, and I'm sprinkling that across the foreground and hopefully that will give me as it dries a little bit of extra texture and that kind of frosty look of sort of um, 
reeds in the background, flowers, weeds, that sort of thing, a tangle of undergrowth growing out from the marsh. So I think that'll do for now. I shall leave it to dry completely. Once it's totally dry, I'll brush the salt off and hopefully it will give me the effects that I'm looking for or something similar anyway. So it's lovely and dry and I really like the effects the salt has given me. I've brushed it all off um, so there's no more salt left on the page and now it's time to bring this painting, this sort of misty, frosty winter marshland together. So using my um, large sort of flat harky brush, the bamboo one from AliExpress, um, I'm just going to really darken up the reeds across the front. Um, this is tube consistency, it's going in really thick. I want it to be nice and dark because I'm going to etch some reeds through this with the corner of a plastic card shortly. Can you see how the corner of the card is pulling through that really thick Payne's grey and revealing the grey underneath and going almost to the white of the paper but revealing the grey underpainting. So um, this is giving me these beautiful reed shapes and as well as the grey reeds it's also moving the paint around and producing some Payne's grey ones too. I'm curling them over and tending them in across towards the right and then just feathering through a bit of very pale grey just to emphasise the flatness of the marsh receding off into the distance. I'm trying not to disturb the, the initial washes too much because I think what they've done is really beautiful. It could be mountains, it could be clouds, it could be anything you want in the distance. But in a semi-abstract painting like this, then it's up to the viewer to interpret it and I'm really happy with the marks there so I'm working now hopefully just to kind of refine it a little bit but without disturbing the beautiful wet in wet effects that watercolour created all by itself. And finally, using my small calligraphy brush, I'm going to put in some detail. I'm going to put in a few lonely marsh marshland birds flying in the sky. But first of all, I'm going to paint in these kind of flowers, sort of reed flowers, seed heads, uh, that sort of thing. Just dotting into these kind of little groups and then pulling down stems into the existing reeds that I scratched in a bit earlier going to work across the whole of the bottom putting in these little dots and marks that just suggest um, these kind of wild dead winter marshland plants. I think there's a sort of desolate beauty to scenes like this that I really enjoy painting. And so now on to a few birds in the sky and just really, really simple, keeping them flying fairly low, just a few flicks with the brush. I do hope that you'll maybe try something like this. Um, I'm not sure what other brands of Payne's Grey are like, whether they'd be any good for this. Um, I think all brands are different. As you can see here, the range of shades from black through to blue and all sorts of pale greys in between um, have been provided by the Cotman Payne's Grey. The only other Payne's Grey that I've tried was Jackson's own brand, and that was actually very blue-black. It was more like indigo, um, but it's always worth experimenting with one colour and just seeing um, what kind of interesting effects you can get and it might just give you some ideas and some inspiration for some of your more planned paintings but this sort of thing that can be lots of fun and you can learn so much from experimenting like this so there's a little group of birds further back in the distance and now i'm going to remove the tape carefully peeling it away from 
the painting, not towards it, just in case the tape was to catch and stick on the paper, but I think this, this tape's okay. Then once you see it with a clean white border, it gives you an idea of what it would look like, sort of matted or mounted and framed, if you chose to do so. But I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that, actually. I really like the misty distance. I like the effects of the reeds. But there's a little mark and it's just there. And I'm not happy with the way that sort of seems to break into the um, horizon line a bit too much. So I'm going to use what I call my scrubber. It's a bristle brush that so I've cut off really small, really short bristles. I um, dipped it into clean, damp water. I'm going to rub it over that little mark, leave it for a few seconds, then dab out with a tissue. Saunders Waterford is not very good for lifting, but I should be able to get this with a couple of coats if I'm careful. So I'm going to put a bit more water on it with the scrubber again, just scrubbing to and fro, being careful not to disturb the paint around it. I think you can see that's nearly gone, that second one. Yeah, that's gone. That's better. I'm happy now. I'm also very pleased with the way the salt has worked out. Remember, when you're using salt, um, don't sprinkle it onto really wet paint and don't try it on really dry paint. The paint has to be somewhere in between, just damp or just moist, in order to get these pretty little patterns. So looking in closely, you can see that there's quite a lot of different effects there, um, but it kind of all adds up to give us a nice, deep, flat, desolate marshland with possibly some mountains in the far distance. Well, thank you very much for watching and I hope it was helpful. Um, please leave us a like and if you haven't already subscribed, that would be lovely if you could subscribe because it really helps with my reach. Um, and thank you so much to my wonderful Patreon group who support this channel. I'll see you soon. Have a nice weekend and happy painting. Bye.